What's up my sisters and brothers from other fathers and mothers? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or on onespotmedia.com. We are also live on Music99 and gojamaica.com. If you have any questions about today's subject, which is CSEC of course, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today we're going to go through some multiple choice questions. Stay with me, all right? So, we want to think about working with the multiple choice questions. And of course, many of them are, are pretty easy. So we're going to go through some easy ones today, all right? And as we go through those easy ones, you'll see how pretty simply can be just to eliminate some of the things that aren't necessary a part of the answer and just even going through the motions of that elimination would of course give you a better chance of scoring high on the multiple choice question all right uh, so our first question says which of the following is a disadvantage of cloud storage and our responses are accessibility in brackets offline without internet or web access b reduction of storage cost to organizations c increased possibility for disaster recovery and d efficient management of data or stored data now remember it says disadvantage of cloud storage and one of the things we must understand where, what, about cloud storage is the fact that if you have no internet access, you can't store anything online. So that one is going to be, of course, the answer. All right. Question number two. Which of the following storage media uses laser technology to store data? Is it A, flash drives, B, magnetic tape, C, CD-ROMs, or D, hard disk. And laser, we know, has to deal with light. The only one there that doesn't, uh, doesn't work with light, or only one there that works with light, it seems, would be CD-ROM. Everything else is magnetic media. So CD-ROMs are the ones that work with laser light. And just to give you a quick picture of what that looks like, your CD-ROM, of course, you know, it has this kind of mylar coating or aluminum coating, and that is what um, the light reflects off of. Now, when the light is being beamed onto this surface, essentially, the reflection tells the device that, listen, we've just made a change. So every time you see a hump or a dip, that home power dip is a change in the reflection and represents a one. But as soon as that change is made and the computer registers a one, everything else after that is zero. All right. So let's say, for instance, we started at, at the left hand side. We'll be reading zeros all the way up until there's a change into a land. And that, that would be a one. And then after that, we have some zeros. Then there's a dip into a pit. That's a one. And so that is how your cd works and that is why we say it's work it works with laser light all right question three which of the following is an example of an embedded computer system is it desktop ibm z system smart television or laptop now two of these you can immediately eliminate a desktop and a laptop could never be Im embedded why because the operating system is loaded onto the hard drive and is read from the hard drive and placed into memory. The only particular one there that really speaks to being embedded is the smart television. Now, the other, the other um, answer, IBM Z system, you might not be sure what that is about. All right? But immediately you can see smart television is your answer because a smart television, you basically are not loading anything from a hard drive, you know, or a CD drive, etc. As you turn the television on, it already has 
routines associated with it. And so that is what we call an embedded system. All right. And this comes from your knowledge of operating systems. So please make sure that you, you study that. All right. The next question. Number four. The most suitable device for the output of architectural drawings is a a plotter, laser printer, graphics tablet, light pen. Now, graphics tablet and light pen are ob obviously not there, are, are not the answer. All right, graphic tablets and pens are input devices, so those could never be it. All right, and then you have a laser printer, and laser printers are pretty small. When we're talking about printing things like architectural drawings, we're talking about large drawings. The, some of the banners we see on billboards are printed using plotters. So plotter is our answer. So whenever you see those large drawings, etc., you're, you're thinking about plotters being used there. And those large drawings, of course, means that the mechanism in and of itself is large. And oftentimes you'll see a plotter and it might be, you know, five or six feet in length. Question five. In modern computers, the CPU speed is measured in and we have kilohertz, gigabytes, kilobytes, and gigahertz. Let me repeat that. Kilohertz, gigabytes, kilobytes, gigahertz. And our answer here is going to be gigahertz. We measure the speed of our computer or our CPU with a term called gigahertz. Um, let me just jump to a picture quickly where you can see we have pointed out the speed of this i i5 this core um, i5 core it's intel of course and the speed of this is 2.5 gigahertz now you might be asking why is it not measured in bytes and kilobytes like an like internet speed etc and we're going to explain that right away first and foremost what is a hertz now for those of you who do physics and ap apologies i tend to take information from all disciplines <laughs> okay so in physics we talk about a hertz it's actually the measurement of one cycle of one cycle of a thing all right and this one cycle we call it a hertz well it wasn't really called a hertz the person who discovered it was called hertz i think and so they call the the the, the unit hertz so that is how we get that hertz, that cycle from. And then hertz is actually frequency measurement, and meaning how often does something happen. So when we are looking at the speed of your processor, it's how fast actually it's um, more or less completing an instruction or fetching and decoding instructions. Because if you from, you know, about first time, some of you might, might have been taught about the instruction cycle, and that instruction cycle um, has fetch, decode, execute, write back. And those four functions are done on an instruction at any one time. And so the computer does that with an instruction, and that is one cycle. So what we're seeing, when you see 2.5 gigahertz, it actually means 2.5 times 10 to the 9 hertz which means that your computer is operating at that same that big number there two five and eight zeros cycles per second so it can possibly complete that amount of instructions per second and if we should finalize the calculation it would mean that each cycle or every time the computer um, accomplishes that instruction or or does a, a machine cycle, it takes about four nanoseconds. Four nanoseconds. That means four one billionth or there about of a second. So each time an instruction is being done, your computer might be working on several different things because of the amount of time. So when you say gigahertz, that, that is what it means. If you go in the exam and you say anything about kilohertz and gigahertz and it has anything to relate to CPU speed, it's going to most often and not be related to gigahertz. All right? Question six. Quality Developers is a company that writes programs to do specific jobs for other companies. These programs are called General Purpose Software, Special Purpose Software, Custom Purpose Software, 
off the shelf software. Now, again, as I said before, many of these you can immediately eliminate. For one, you can eliminate off the shelf software because this organization is creating software specifically for another organization and for a specific job. So off the shelf could never be it. All right, general purpose can't be it either because a general purpose software is created with one particular job in mind and that particular job is not going to be specific to any organization or to any particular subsection of the job. Just like a word processor, a spreadsheet, these are general purpose. And so it could never be that. Then we have special purpose and custom purpose. Now I've never heard of custom purpose in my life. I've heard of custom written and customized, but custom purpose, no. So that, that disqualifies itself altogether. So the only answer we have left is special purpose. And any kind of software being created for a specific task is normally special purpose. Next question, question seven. Desreen has a desktop computer. She turns on the system and waits five minutes, but no image is displayed. During troubleshooting, which of the following is most likely to be identified as the problem? A, the keyboard is disconnected. The keyboard is disconnected and there is no image on the screen. Very unlikely. B, the power cable to the monitor is loose. Very possible. C, the battery power connected to the system is loose. N no, I don't think so. D, touch screen is disabled. Of course, if we read over the question, we can see where it just says that there's no image displayed. So there's a possibility that the power cable on or connected to the monitor is loose. And that is normally the case if you'd move around the computer, move around your, your desktop, or move around your monitor every now and again. The cable becomes loose and then you're seeing no picture. But of course, you can also look at the front of your screen and you might see a little indicator or an LED light that shows and says, hey, we don't have any power coming here, so fix that, all right? So the answer is B, the power cable to the monitor is loose. Question eight. Vera is taking an online class and is required to enter her password twice. This process is called A, storing process, B, validation process, C, verification process, D, authenticity. Now this particular um, situ situation or scenario is called a double entry and it is often what we use for verification especially when you're signing up for your email and you want and they told you enter your password twice so that can ensure that both entries match each other so that's a verification process question nine each website on the internet can be accessed by entering a unique address this address is referred to as and we did all of this last week so you should remember it's referred to as A, HTTP, B, HTML, C, FTP, D, URL. Um, just to expand these terms, HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, FTP, File Transfer Protocol, and U is Uniform Resource Locator, and D is our answer, Uniform Resource Locator, all right? Um, and that is where you'd see www.cxc.org. That's your URL. Question 10. Teachers are able to mark class registers online and provide instant feedback on assessment through the use of social media tools, M learning devices, simulation software computer assisted learning and our answer is computer assisted learning now don't get me wrong there are some so, well during this period now a lot of teachers might be using social media to to help with their learning and to increase the amount of contact time they have with their students but the whole um, discipline of teaching, of course, 
is being aided or assisted by computers. And so we call it computer assisted learning. Question 11, which of the following should be done before publishing a website? A, compile the source code. B, create the algorithm for the website. C, ensure that all hyperlinks are working correctly. D, purchase the software needed to develop the website. So A says compile the source code. Um, we do have source code in working with websites, but of course, we don't compile it really. It's not called compiled. It's more or less interpreted by your browser. So we're not talking about compiling. And the scenario begs for what do you do immediately? Or what are you doing just before you publish your website? B says create the algorithm for the website. Well, absolutely not. There's no way you could be about to publish a website and you're just creating an algorithm for a website. Plus, we don't create algorithms for a website. We create algorithms for programs. C says, ensure that all hyperlinks are working correctly. Now, this makes quite a bit of sense. Because if we are launching a website, the key to any launch, the key to any working website is that, hey, every single hyperlink works. If you are on a website and the hyperlinks don't work, you'll more or less trash the website and decide you want nothing to do with it because it's not moving on where you want it to go. And then we have purchased the software needed to develop the website. Of course not. You don't need any specific kind of software these days to create a website. Right? Last week we did we did a design in Word. All right? And then of course they, somebody wrote me and told me, hey, we use Weebly and there are a host of them. There's Wix. Um, you can use WordPress. There are so many of them out there that you can create websites from. And the idea is everybody might one day have their own website or be able to create your own website. All right. And some might be saying, then how is it that apps work online? Well, even though apps are programs in and of themselves, they are also interpreted by your phone or wherever. You don't really, you don't really have them per se being um, interpreted by a browser. They exist on the phone or they exist on your, your machine. All right. Um, your web page, on the other hand, is on a server somewhere else in the world and is loaded to you on request by the entering of a URL. All right. So the answer is C. Ensure that all hyperlinks are working correctly. Question 12. What is the name of the highlighted word or picture in a web page that a user can click on to go to another web page? And our responses are A, hypertext, B, bookmark, C, hyperlink, D, connection. We did this last week as well. Of course, the answer is hyperlink. All right. And it came in the previous question as well. Um, so as long as it is high, well, it doesn't have to be highlighted, but it is normally highlighted. And as long as you can click on that particular picture or word and it sends you to another web page or somewhere else, it is called a hyperlink. Question 13. Text entered into a spreadsheet is aligned towards the left by default. These entries are called A, labels, B, values, C, formulae, D, functions. Remember, we're talking about text and there are three, there are three categories of data when we're working with spreadsheets. Labels are texts, so labels are the answer. The values, of course, are like currency, num um, numbers, general number, or something of that nature. And those values are aligned to the right whenever you enter them. So that is a good way to check if your data types are correct in your spreadsheet. If you entered some kind of data type, if it's a text, then by default, it should align to the left of the cell. If you entered a number, 
by default that number should align itself to the right of your cell and of course you can change those as is needed but those are the ways that you check if you entered an actual number and you entered an actual text if you wanted to use a number like a text then the older convention was that you would put a apostrophe or a quote a single quote just before the word or just before the number and that number will be read as a text so you can try that at home um, formula it could never be formula because what a formula is is a user created um, construction of either um, functions and, and and operands and operators like plus minus etc so it's not formula and a function of course is a predefined um, a predefined operation inside your spreadsheet like sum, uh, um, max, min, vlookup, hlookup, all those are predefined so we call them functions. If you created something from scratch, it's a formula but those particular predefined operations are called functions and so we try to make the distinction very clear to you. Now remember you can use um, functions in formula but uh, you, may, you must make the distinction. One you create from scratch, the other one is predefined. So the answer to this is labels because labels are left aligned by default in your spreadsheet. Uh, question 14. The speed of a laser printer is measured in? The first one is DPP, that's A, A is DPP, B, DPI, C, PPM, and D, LPM. Now, with this particular question, you have to know what these acronyms mean. If you don't, then you are up the creek without a paddle. Um, for A, DPP, that we don't have a DPP as it relates to printers or relates to output. So that is not even a word or, or, or a phrase or, or anything like that. DPI, we do have a DPI, which is question, which is um, response B, and DPI stands for dots per inch. And then we have C, PPM, pages per minute, and then D, LPM, lines per minute. DPI, let's go back to DPI, dots per inch, has to do with the quality of print. So you will get like our you'll see maybe you're working with a printer and you might say 300 dpi which means 300 dots per inch and that actually um translates to an inch on your paper all right but that could never be speed um what we're talking about speed we're talking about how many lines or how many pages a printer will print per minute good and in the case of your laser printer it's measured in line in in sorry in pages per minute because your laser printer is pretty quick for some applications especially if it's just a monochrome laser printer meaning it only prints black uh, sort of like the printers that e-learning um, acquired from dell to give to schools those will give you a sense of uh, what it means for um, pages to be printed per minute um, and you will notice also, if you buy any kind of printer or laser printer, they will give you a measurement as to what the speed is. Uh, or even give you a total that you should get from every toner. Now, don't be fooled by it. It is, it is accurate. Those speeds are accurate. But they are normally measured off of you just printing text. So if you're just printing text, they'll give you that measurement. If you're supposed to print, um, I guess, a painting or something that you drew and it had a full bleeder color, and that was how you decided to print your things um, eventually or as you worked, maybe you're an artist and you want to print your things in color, your toner will last a lot less than somebody who's just printing text. So those speeds might be misleading even though factual. All right, so we on to question 15. Which of the following is an example of a spreadsheet function? 
and the answers are function sum open brackets a1 comma a2 comma a3 close brackets now there is no way a function in excel would begin with the word function that that is not the convention and so that one has eliminated itself just by adding the word function b sum equal a1 plus a2 plus a3 uh, this of course is completely wrong as well we always begin functions and formula in excel with an equal sign now i've seen students write this and and give it to me and i'm saying no we did not learn this this is not how we do it the word sum doesn't come before the equal sign the equal sign always precedes whatever comes in your function and then because you're actually using sum you don't need to have that a plus a1 plus a2 plus a3 c equal sum open bracket a1 colon a3 close bracket now that is your answer because one if you look at the convention the equal sign comes first then the name of the function and every function in excel after the name of the function comes a bracket or a parenthesis the opening parenthesis and then we have a1 to a a3 and this a1 of course is a relative reference to whatever is in the cell a1 and the colon there actually means two and then we have a3 which is the ending cell reference so that means we are moving from a1 to a3 which encompasses a1 a2 and a3 now that is what we call a range of cells all right and any range of cell will take up a rectangular or square so this fun this function equals sum open bracket a1 colon a3 close bracket is the answer for this particular question we are going to go for a break again wash your hand get some fruits get some water more on schools not out after this so forward <laughs> Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. We're talking about multiple choice in CSEC IT. Uh, before we get into the multiple choice, I have to give you my tip for today. And my tip for today is never stop learning. Never stop learning. Even at my age, and I'm not going to tell you how old I truly am, and don't look at this. When I visit the barber, you know I look much better later on. But never stop learning. One of the things some of my teachers used to tell me, or one of my teachers used to tell me, is that an educated person is someone who has taken information and has used it to benefit his or herself and applied it to their own situation. Now, maybe you don't do physics, but I use some physics today in the class. The first time we came, we did some things and, and, and introduced a new word and all things like that. Never stop educating yourself. Educate yourself spiritually. Educate yourself in every single way that you can because you can never tell what you might want to use it for or what you can use it for, all right? So that is my tip. Let's move on to the questions which of course you can see are the easier ones. And um, we are going to examine some harder ones if I'm back next time. Please, please make the camera back, please. Um, okay, so we're at question 16. The physical layout of a network is called network topology, A, network configuration, data communication, communication media. Again, some of these are just complete distractors. Uh, and the answer is topology. And this topology, of course, we, we, we studied three, star, bus, ring. Those are the three that we've studied. There are more, but you only need to know those three for now, all right? You need to know the mechanisms, you need to know how they work, um, what happens if the connecting device goes down, Stuff like that. Make sure that you know them. The connecting media that might facilitate the network, etc. Some of you at schools, you might have a network at, at school as well where all your computers have been wired to a switch, you know, and that switch more or less is the central place for all your cables to be plugged. That's a star, all right? Question 17. A set of rules and procedures that govern the transmission of data are called emails, modems, bulletin, protocols. A uh, set of rules. Um, I'm laughing at the answers because they are absolutely preposterous. Um, but the answer, of course, are protocols. And if you can do any form of word association, even if you know the definition of protocols, you can more or less guess what that answer is. So your answer are protocols. Um, could never be emails or modems. Modems are actually physical devices um, that used to come inside your computer when you wanted to connect your telephone line directly to your computer. And that is what did the transfer, the translation of information from what your computer um, from digital to uh, analog and, and vice versa. So those are not the answers. Question 18. The use of computer systems to distribute information which inevitably results in its use for spreading both beneficial and harmful material is called computer fraud, industrial espionage, electronics, electronic eavesdropping, Propaganda. Now let's read the question again. The use of computer systems to distribute information which inevitably results in its use for spreading both beneficial and harmful material is called computer fraud. That's, not, that's a no because computer fraud has more to do with you using a computer to falsify documents or falsify things relating to things stored. Industrial espionage, no. Uh, and industrial espionage has nothing to do with James Bond and spying. So go read a book, just in case you thought that that what it was. Electronic eavesdropping, no, that has more to do with you uh, or somebody tapping into conversations, whether it be asynchronous conversations in the in the form of chat or, or synchronous conversation. Um, not 
um, autosynchronous. Um, so I can't remember the exact word. But um, when you're having a conversation like on Skype or whatever, you, you, you can have people who will tap into that. Um, just the other day we were talking about... <laughs> what was it? What, a, what was the term? Zoom bombing. Uh, <laughs> right. So remember, protect your Zoom passwords and all that. Um, but the answer for this is propaganda. Uh, and of course, just word association again. Um, propaganda is spreading information, whether falsely or correctly, for, the, for, any, for some sort of benefit or harm. Um, that's propaganda. Uh, I remember one of my teachers reminding me that um, I can't remember if it was Churchill or one of those people who said that propaganda won the war. Um, <laughs> that was funny. Well, World War II or World War I, I can't remember which one it was. Question 18. Illicitly gaining access to a competitor's information in order to gain an unfair advantage. Sounds like James Bond's doing. I'm kidding. Um, computer fraud, industrial espionage, electronic eavesdropping propaganda. So, of course, we see where there's a repetition of the answers, but just a change of the question itself. And this, can, this sometimes is common. Um, and it's just a matter of you knowing what the definitions are. For this, of course, it's industrial espionage. And you're just more or less stealing stuff from a competing organization. Uh, and of course, this, this borders on, on terrible ethics. And for those of you who are doing Cape IT, you would have studied ethics. Um, I remember teaching some of my students about a particular organization where this programmer stole some stole some code from another organization and tried to use it in his company's code and almost wreck his company. And even when they found out, you know, there were lawsuits and all kind of things. All right. Question 19, and we're coming on to the penultimate question. Which of the following is not a type of query? And this goes without saying, this is so easy. Select, update, delete, form. There are several types of queries, but only three are mentioned here. And the three which I mentioned are the most common ones and the ones that you'd normally use. Select, update, and delete. A form is by no means a query. A form is a completely different object and it's not a type of query whatsoever. All right? And finally, what is the resolution or, or print quality of a printer measured in? DPP, PPM, DPI, LPM. I said it initially. I said it before with a previous question, so you should be able to recall it. The resolution of a printer measured in dots per inch. All right, that is it for the lesson. You can catch a repeat of the lesson, of course, today at 4 p.m. on JNN, and of course on Saturday between 1 and 5. Of course, you can catch it on One Spot Media, and hey, remember, there are other things going on, social media pages, Twitter, etc., where you can do some tests that were left the last time. And again, remember, guys, stay healthy, wash your hand, wash your face, eat right, bless up. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose.